support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hawk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coming to you. It's Thursday night, 725, 2013. And ladies and gentlemen, the first thing I want to address tonight is this. I want everybody out there who listens to the show, all the intercessors, all the friends of the show, I want you to say a prayer in earnest. And uh, we'll, we'll just say the prayer right now. I'll say it. You can pray as well. Lord, I pray that you would take Pastor Bruce, Pastor Bruce in Ohio, Lord. I pray that you would help to bring him out of the coma so that very fine doctors are then able to do some things for him. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will alert Pastor Bruce inside the coma there, Lord, if you be with him at this moment. And if it be thy will, Lord, deliver him from the coma because there are good fine doctors who are able to do some things for him and to help him with his situation on the stem of his brain where he had an aneurysm or what that blew in the brain there at the back stem of the brain. Lord Jesus, if it be thy will, I pray that you would bring him out of the coma and give him a miracle. And Lord, I also would pray that we have a, a friend, uh, the River Pirate, who has uh, deep distress from viral infections that have uh, obtained uh, in service on behalf of you, Lord Jesus, and also on behalf of this show. And uh, we don't know exactly what happened uh, or how it was caught, but uh, if you would pray for the River Pirate that he can shake and get rid of and to give him a miracle with regard to viral infections and his breathing and all of the things associated with it. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would, once again, if it be thy will, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would bring Pastor Bruce in Ohio out of the coma so that the good doctors can go to work with him and to do the things necessary to improve on his situation. Lord, I know that you can heal him or give a miracle and do it. And for the river pirate, Lord, I pray that you would heal him and give him a miracle with respect to the viral infection and to abate the infection and to remove it from the lungs and from the upper respiratory tract. In your name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd pray for Pastor Bruce and the River Pirate and for a lot of others, you know, out there. If there's anybody you know, include a prayer for all those you know who are under duress from the evil one, under duress from financial worries, under duress from all kinds of things associated with modern life in this world as Lucifer and his minions at this stage of the game may have their opportunity to do their last ill will before they get their clocks cleaned and before the Lord Jesus sends his angels to pluck the tares, the workers of iniquity out and to put them in the fiery furnace and to burn them in that fire forever. And I will say this right now because I had on my spirit to do this. Chapter 38, Ezekiel. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, and all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, and all his bands, the house of Togarma, the north quarters, and all of his bands, and many people with thee, be thou prepared and prepare. Let's go back to that. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, and thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, 
and thou that all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time, at the same time, shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, and I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, and to take a prey, and to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods, that dwell in the midst of of the land. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, that to me is the United States. The first part definitely is Israel, but then when you look at this, thou at the same time, at the same time, okay, it shall come to pass, verse 10, Ezekiel 38, 10, it shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind. He's talking to God, may God. Chief Prince, you know, Magog. Well, that's Vladimir Putin, ladies and gentlemen. That's Magog is Russia. Putin would be the chief prince. And go up to the land of the unwalled villages, to them that are at rest and that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. And that's basically the United States, whereas in Israel, that is not the case. People have walls. People have bars. People have gates. Okay, there are gates to all the park complexes, all the different items. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the Gog Magog war is not that far off. The hook in the jaw may be come Syria. Syria might be the hook in the jaw, and incidentally, just so that you know, is that the, basically the CIA, which you re, we quote the article from the Wall Street Journal about a month or so ago, or in June they wrote it saying that the CIA would like to have the war ongoing in Syria with the U.S. in it or have a bigger war in August. Well, we're almost right now a week away from August, and we've also found out that the CIA is, is greatly arming the Syrian rebels, many of whom are al-Qaeda, many of whom are the al-Qaeda affiliates from Libya that killed our ambassador that are still being run by the United States government intelligence community and the military. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, it's, you know, the Benghazi who killed our ambassador in Benghazi because he was hiring them to go, the Libyan rebels, to the, after they took down Gaddafi, to then go to Syria. And then he got cold feet. They decided to take him out, and then they killed him and sodomized him while they killed him. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. And this happened on the watch of this Joker Tut and of this Congress. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. So we have Putin has done the snap missile drills now. Now there apparently is going to be a NATO drill uh, in uh, Poland and in also uh, the... Uh, uh, Baltic nations, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Estonia, etc., there, that they're going to do drills there to repel an invasion, which would be a foreign invasion by Russia. So they're going to be there with NATO forces doing that. That is a direct confrontation in Putin's zone. It would be like Putin coming to, let's say, uh, oh, I don't know, Canada and uh, doing it in Canada and running a drill in Canada uh, to, uh, you know, go against the United States. But the fact is, is this, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you can ask your legislator if he's not a piece of crap or she's not a piece of crap, which you found out yesterday most of the large majority of them were when they allowed and, and continued the unlawful, the unconstitutional, the tremendously detrimental, 24-hour surveillance of all the American people by the necrophiliac Shiite arseholes, the NSA. And you had yesterday, up there in Congress, supposedly little General Alexander, who in fact lied, who in fact lied and perjured himself before Congress, 
up there giving what he called special briefings in closed hearing rooms for all of those in the house that want to come. That is an opinion of mine on a bunch of BS. Bravo, Sierra. What I would suggest to you and would allege, I don't say it's 100% true, I just allege, and it's been alleged by others, that what they do, because all of the Congress people are surveilled by the NSA, what General Alexander, I submit to you, in my opinion, was doing up there was showing everybody their blackmail file, showing them their blackmail file, or let's say with a stack of files, and they bring in a certain guy, and the whip brings them in, the whip being whatever party was the guy or gal was vacillating about voting against the amendment that would have stopped the NSA at least officially stopped them in their tracks. They would have kept on doing what they're doing because they're illegal and they think they're above the law. Since 1947, but the fact of the matter is, we ain't going to have your NSA crap for very much longer and then you doing it to put everybody in a subjugation just because you've made a deal with some of the space aliens, the Luciferian pond scum. You made a deal with the Greys. You've also got a side deal with the Nordic uh, Whites. Uh, okay, you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on, don't you? And there's all kind of other species that are from out, out there, too. And most of them are Luciferian pond scum. And you traded technology back then, and you still do it now. And you still have your place in the Marianas, the other atoll, the other atoll, or one of the other atolls near Kwajalein, but not Kwajalein, where you have, with your Nazi scientists, you still have, don't you? You still have the Nazi scientists there in the Isle of Doc Moreau, where you, you're reverse engineering and you have base there, all kind of craft, and also you have alien beings there. And you're doing gen, uh, you're doing genetic research. You're doing cross species research, and the individuals who guard the place might even wear body armor that's white. Body armor that's white. You see, you guys cut the deal with the devil's henchmen from the Luciferian spawn in space. That's what you did. And so you got General Alexander up there. I submit to you an opinion, an alleged, you know, kind of look at it, is that what they're really doing is not giving briefings about how wonderful the NSA is in stopping terrorism, when the fact that we know that the United States government is supporting al-Qaeda and running al-Qaeda in Syria. Let's get real here, people. This is not P.S. This is not true. It, it, it's true. It's, it's, we're running Al-Qaeda in Syria, okay? Al-Qaeda was the name, the base, the database of CIA and intelligence assets of Arab and Muslim persuasion who would work for money. Bin Laden, all that old crew. Zawahiri, some say that he used to give his, uh, you know, little speeches, uh, his little, uh, you know, uh, deals that he actually lives in Florida and who happens to be an Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood, you see. The ones that killed Sadat. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it just gets so deep. But old General Alexander, who lied and who perjured himself for Congress, just as Clapper, <coughs> Clapper, lights off, lights on, Clapper, just as Clapper did, just as Holder did, just as all these jerks did, perjured themselves before Congress with respect to this information that Snowden brought out as a whistleblower. Now they forced him into a gig here to where he's got to become the traitor or go to Russia. Because he could not go to Congress, obviously. People say, he should have gone before Congress. You see how Congress voted. You see how Congress voted. 217 people in the House of Representatives say that you, the American people, have to be under 
24-hour continual surveillance on your telephones, all of your Internet, your Skype, <clears throat> your smartphones, your searches online, your finances, that you have to be monitored in your vehicles, your license plate readers, all of this stuff. You got to have drones up above ready to strike you down. You got to have dots on your mailbox. This is a Nazi totalitarian baloney piece of crap. And General Alexander is one of the forefront leading it. So what did he do up there? I guarantee you, based on my opinion of what I know happens in Congress, that he is sitting there with a whole bunch of file folders and maybe he just picked out on one of these recalcitrant type people who was dragging their feet, not going to vote the way the NSA wanted. They just say, hey, you remember that uh, when you first came to Washington, D.C., after you came in from Keokuk or you came in from uh, Missoula or you came in from whatever congressional district, you know, you came in from, from the sticks, the hustings, wherever, when you were fresh face and you were all clean and shiny and bright, you were coming to be Mr. Smith in Washington. You remember when they took you down there to that restaurant in Georgetown? Maybe it was that Irish joint down there, that Irish pub down there that's kind of famous that they threw the old Hawk out of when old Hawk was talking the truth to a guy one time. Hawk was not even finished his hamburger this a few years back. Not even finished his cheeseburger and fries when they said, uh, sir, that's all uh, we'd uh, like for you to pay your tab and leave immediately. And I'd been just asking some questions. So that told me that that joint was all wired. Maybe it's that Irish joint there. Well, anyway, you remember, you know, old Alexander could say or somebody could say, you remember that time when uh, we took you down there when you first came off shiny bright in your, your orientation? And when we put that uh, that red-headed secretary had just come to the table and was going to be in a pool of secretaries in your area for your party and they just all sat down, a bunch of the nice girls in D.C., and that redhead sat next to you, and you just kind of never seen anybody quite look like that. She was 5'9", five, 5'10", five, had legs, you know, all the way up to the wazoo. And uh, she whispered in your ear that she heard that you were the most uh, prodigious, you know, person from Iowa or Alabama or or Louisiana, or, or Montana, or Idaho, or wherever that they think is a, a flyover Kansas, or Missouri, or, you know, Nebraska, that you just heard that you were the just a cat's meow when it came to the bedroom. And, of course, you found that you thought the, that she was a genius. And, of course, one thing led to the other and all that stuff. Or perhaps it was when the uh, good uh, general brought up the fact, you know, that uh, little boy that you were uh, playing with there on the playground, uh, you know, uh, back in uh, such and such, such and such, back in your district, uh, you know that we have you uh, videotapes of that particular instance, you know, when you were back in the old days, first running for office or whatever. Or they could say, well, you know, you appear to be a real good guy, but you know, we do have or audio recordings of you taking that zero Halliburton suitcase uh, or briefcase full of uh, $100 bills to finance your campaign. Whatever it is, ladies and gentlemen, those things were brought out. And then you also see 12 people, 12 votes, how many votes, how many people were outstanding, did not vote that day. They won by 12 votes. 12 people abstained from voting. So maybe they were the good people. Maybe they were the ones that say, you know, I'm not going to vote for you, but what I'll do is I'll just uh, uh, leave town because I got an emergency, all right? Or I don't feel well and I'm under the weather today. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the CIA, the N you know, the NSA, excuse me, the NSA, and all these EIEIOs are now free to roam about your world, free to roam about your country. And they're going to be given further license. And since yesterday, all of the whole Internet has been weird and screwed up. Steve Quayle's website was gooped up and taken down off and on, off and on, all night long and all today. I think it's better now. But let me tell you some other things that are going on and how already on the other side of Ezekiel 38 
on the other portion of this deal where mentioned the fact that Putin, you see, had already done his drills with last week over 130 combat aircraft, 70 ships, 5,000 tanks, 160,000 troops, and 320 tons of equipment. The drill took place near the border with China, was intended to simulate a response to a hypothetical attack by Japanese and U.S. forces. And that's according to Konstantin Simkov, a retired officer of the Russian military general staff. Remember I told you a year or two ago, when we first started hearing the reports of the Russians coming into Fort Carson, Colorado, where the public relations officer, Wendy L. Snyder, said she just wanted to take those Spetsnaz boys to a baseball game, the American pastime. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, they're all over the place now. So are the red Chinese. But the fact is, Russia is ready to go. But on the other hand, on the other hand, our Coast Guard is not allowed to do anything but respond to a rescue now. They're not to patrol. They're not to do all the usual things they used to do. So if a submarine comes up in an area, let's say off of San Diego or off of L.A., and it happens to be a new JL-2 patrol subclass that has both ballistic, nuclear weapons, and crews on it, a red Chinese, and let's say one of those popped up or was in the hunt, and they finally detected it, say off the coast of California, say Wednesday or early, late Tuesday night, somewhere like that, and at the same time, in Japan, Japanese had to scramble jets after the Chinese plane flies into the airspace of the uh, islands there, the disputed islands in the uh, East China Sea. A Y-8 airborne early warning plane of the Red Chinese flew through the airspace between Okinawa Prefecture's main island and a smaller Miyako island in southern Japan over the Pacific around noon, and later took the same route back over the East China Sea. The Japanese scrambled planes at that same time, ladies and gentlemen. I submit to you, and you won't find this on the Internet necessarily, you will see, no, you won't find it on the Internet unless you've got the ability to find it on the Internet. That's all I need to say. But the fact is, is that the uh, NASIC out of right path, issued ballistic missile and other threat assessments in the last couple of weeks. Okay? And at least one Sky King message, which would have been either Wednesday or Tuesday night or somewhere in that time period, was pertaining to a JL-2, a patrol sub from China. Okay? Now, we had the Red Chinese report you know, from Berea, Kentucky, last week, where they said and speculated that they were possibly releasing something down there, some kind of a viral deal or whatever. That was my speculation. But the fact of the matter is they were seen, Chinese military, Berea, Kentucky, in rented vans with the officer, as I told you, and if you weren't listening last week, you're on vacation or something, the officer wore some kind of cool you know, like Hooters shirt from the coast, the East Coast, uh, you know, or a surf shirt with a naked girl on it or some kind of a, of a weird T-shirt. The other guys were in their BDUs. Well, <clears throat> the person who saw them and who gave that report was then noticed by one Chinese soldier up on the balcony or whatever watching. And then that guy appeared in the inner hallway where said person that I knew gave the report appeared at the other end of the inner hallway where I, when my guy was going to his room. Guy and I was going to his room. The same guy who I bought him from the, from the balcony just appeared down at the other end. Well, my guy, being unafraid of such situations, said, you know, basically gave him the high sign or gave him the sign that I, I know what you're up to. You come down here, you're going to get something you don't want, Mr. Red Chinese soldier. But at the same time, I think that my guy, the old river pirate, may have got dusted 
or something with some sort of viral infection at that point in time after giving that report. And hence, I asked for the prayer. And, of course, with that respect, the Lord Jesus is in the River Pirates Corner. I already know that. And has preserved him through thick and thin for this end times to be a stalwart foe of evil, a stalwart stand-up guy for the Lord Jesus and for the freedoms that we once had in America. A true patriot. Now, the fact is, if we've got these red Chinese over everywhere, and we have also popping up in Ohio and Indiana and West Virginia, these novel or interesting swine flus, and that we know that the H7N9, the new bird flu, uh, basically is a bioweapon, created by the Red Chinese, all right, then you can see that we're going to have a lot of stuff. I would like to know if anybody in the Berea, Kentucky area, or anywhere down in there, maybe even down, uh, you know, up far as Lexington, up in there, uh, maybe on down into Knoxville and, and that area, if anybody is getting weird viral infections that don't seem to go away, that are severe and going on and causing... Uh, almost asthma-like symptoms or uh, pneumonia-like symptoms. I'd like to have a report. You can send that to uh, uh, Steve777 at stevequail.com, and you can put attention hawk. Uh, anybody who sees red Chinese or Russian troops or foreign troops in this country, send a report, attention hawk, at steve777 at stevequail.com. You can send it to Steve. I will get it. Now, with this same respect, let me just read something to you here. <clears throat> and this is on stevequail.com, Dreams and Visions, all right? And here's the title of it, as Americans moved out, as Chinese moved in to the FEMA camp refugees' homes. He says, my friend related to, to me a dream he had last night. He saw Homeland Security authorities and a sheriff in front of a beautiful home in the suburbs. It's probably little Dickie Jones up there in Butler County. Probably little Dickie Jones, you know, little Dickie Jones, the high or the low sheriff up there who just loves red chinks and loves Russians. And they said uh, he was in the sheriff and the homeland security in front of a beautiful home in the suburbs. Also seen was this family of five loading up their suitcases into a homeland security white van, which was preparing to be sent off into a FEMA work camp. The father had lost his job at General Motors for the company or the, uh, for the company had been relocated to China. He was no longer to be able to pay the mortgage on their home, so they were now forced to vacate. Their two sons, who were going to college, as to quit, as the father could no longer pay for tuition. The entire family got out of their van after they had loaded it up, and as they were leaving, they saw a Chinese family arriving at the home. They had just vacated, and the Chinese father inserted a key into the lock and opened the door, and they proceeded to move in. I'll be back and cover more of this in a moment about these red Chinese. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, Enter Health Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10 to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast at third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Oh, 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hawk. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's Thursday night, 725, 2013. The Chinese say it's the year of the snake. Well, I believe that. They know exactly what they're talking about on that. If you would like to get an extra discount on all of the items that enter food, enter health botanical cells, go to enterfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com, or call 866-762. 92.38. For instance, you could get the 14-day. They have a new 14-day survival pail, which is the all-organic food. No bad stuff, no extra GMO junk. It's all organic. 99.99. You've also got the 40-day, 40-night pail. Ladies and gentlemen, the herbal tinctures, the inner food itself where you can make a cocktail, you know, make a shake once or twice a day, which will give you all the nutrients you need. And then you can extend your long-term storage food or, you know, your canned food for a lot longer. Because uh, I'll tell you what, the way gardening is going and things in certain areas this year, it's been a little tough. I'm starting to get a few things, but I'm going to tell you other places are so dry. Or like in Florida, down there, uh, it's so wet in certain areas down there that they, they, they can't handle any more moisture. It's just, uh, you know... Uh, takes so long to run off even into the canals and whatever. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you call them or you use the email interfood.com or 866-762-9238 and you tell them Hawk, Hawk sent you, that's the code. You will get an additional discount even over and above discounts for quantities, etc. on anything that you purchase from the Interfood guys. And the only thing you don't get it on is on a Berkey water filter because they're already discounted as much as they can be. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you something else. All we're seeing now is one thing after the other. With Detroit, the whole country is going to go the way of Detroit. There's other cities that are much worse off. Chicago, for instance, is much worse off financially than Detroit is. Um, other cities, uh, you know, you can just take your pick of them. Um, I would throw into that category places, you know, like uh, uh, Toledo, Ohio, Cleveland. Uh, I mean, heck, you can just name a jillion of them. Cities in California. All over the map. Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, the whole county is totally bankrupt, totally broke. The whole state of Illinois is totally broke. You know, that's what you get when you spawn a president. You know, that's what you get when you get a joker tut. And then you put his Joker Tut little fancy pants, little tap shoes, you know, Rahm Emanuel in as the so-called godfather of Chicago. Well, he ain't nothing. He ain't nothing compared to any of them. I mean, uh, for those up there, I, I, I used to know in the old days, I used to know uh, uh, somebody named Champagne. Champagne in the legal profession, so to speak. And for those in Chicago, you know who that is. And uh, so anyway, I know who the real godfathers of Chicago are, you know. And the fact is, is that it sure ain't Rahm Emanuel, little tap dancer, who's basically allowed the police to desert all the things and to put up shop and to quit doing anything except for arresting good people. Leave the street gangs to, uh, you know, do whatever they want to do because it's like a war zone. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen. I guess it'll have the drones for you. And just like in the movie RoboCop, I mentioned it last week. Remember, RoboCop was for Detroit. Well, I'll tell you what, you probably see him sooner than later. We got Atlas. We've got the, uh, what is it, the dog, you know, that uh, swords robot that looks like a dog. We've got the other two or three different DARPA robots that are already been in operation overseas. They'll just put them out there and put some 50 cal machine guns or 30 cals on them and, uh, you know, and uh, mount some, uh, you know, grenade launchers and some laser uh, uh, type of weapons and maybe even, uh, you know, a taser device or three or four or something that shoots a net out to catch you running or, or ejects a stream of sticky foam or ejects a stream of slicky foam. Because, ladies and gentlemen, they have slick stuff that makes you slide. You can't even stand on it. They have sticky stuff that sticks you right to it, and you can't get up until it's, uh, you know, given, you're given a neutralizer that neutralizes that chemical. 
So those robots, I guess, are going to patrol you, and then we'll have drones up above. And to wit on these drones, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You know, this is going to be a big thing. But what I'm trying to say to you is this. Do you really think that since all the pensions are going to go bye-bye in Detroit, do you think the pensions in Illinois, the pensions in Chicago, or the pensions in Cleveland and the Ohio, uh, do you think that, the you know, the pensions in California... Uh, today, California is talking about mandatory participation in their, you know, <clears throat> state government fund, you see, you know, plan where they're going to mandatorily make everybody contribute to their pension plans. And you remember when they had all those pension funds and they lost all the money in the stock market in one of those cities out there a few years ago? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's just getting so bad. They're going to steal all your money. They're going to blow it out. Just like B said, get your money out of the banks. Get your money out of the stock market. Get your money out of the bond market, out of your 401Ks, out of your IRAs. And what did he say to do? Put it into long-term storage food. Put it into water purification, farmland or cropland where you can raise a garden and also into firearms and other things to protect yourself, and then put it into gold and silver, gold and silver, gold and silver. And I would include with that the food ammunition as well, and boots. Going to be, you know, really interesting commodities of the future. Uh, you could also say blue jeans. You could say a lot of different things, but I'm going to tell you, if you would like to get gold or silver and get it now from somebody who told you to buy it when gold was 300 when silver was five bucks or four fifty, then you call Steve Quayle at 406-586-4840. 406-586-4840. You tell him Hawk sent you. You tell him Hawk sent you. Or you can contact Steve by email. Steve777 at stevequail.com. And you can say, Steve, I would like to get into silver. I'd like to get into gold or whatever. Here's what I'd like to do. You call me up. Here's the best time to call me. My name, the phone number, whatever, et cetera, to contact you. And Steve will call you back and get with you. Go ahead and get this while you still can get it. Because all things are rolling and rolling and rolling, too. The fact that it is only by the grace of the Lord Jesus that we have any kind of additional time or opportunity any additional time to prepare. Our Father in Heaven and Jesus Christ are the ones that are allowing you a little additional time for you to get prepared to withstand what the Lord said, you know, in Matthew 24. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right? And then he also told you what to expect, you know, in Luke 21, didn't he? He also told you what to expect in Luke 21, as we've gone over so many times, so many times, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. And ye, this is Luke 21, verse 16, And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish, because in your, in your patience... Possess ye your souls. Yeah. And you go down to verse 26, or verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea, and the waves roaring, and men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming 
on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. We got a little time, ladies and gentlemen, but you're supposed to be looking up, but at the same time, you need to be preparing so that you can protect you and your family from these tears, from these workers of iniquity that are coming. Now to that, that capability, let me go back to drones. I'm going to tell you something else in a minute, too, that's just very interesting. But just in terms of drones, this is another, uh, uh, let's say, uh, there's a small airfield. A uh, small airfield is concealed by trees and in a remote area. That airfield happens to be somewhere uh, near Lebanon, somewhere near Lebanon, Ohio, somewhere near Lebanon, Ohio, uh, in Warren County, Ohio, which is next to Butler County and then above Hamilton County, which is Cincinnati. And they're doing all kind of heavy drone testing and low-level flight testing carried out in the last few days. And then also a lot of helicopter traffic coming from Wright Pat or from the Springfield Air National Guard base, which is also a foreign base. It's where the Danish uh, fighter uh, wing was stationed at. But that is also designated as a drone base, the Springfield Air National Guard base. So just to let you know, you want to see, and you're up there in that part of Ohio, see if you can get some pictures of any of these drones, if you want. That's up to you. And that's uh, that's something that means uh, you, you ain't scared to death, because I'll tell you, they could, they could do something to you. But that's coming out, and that's right out of the right path. That's that same area where all the red Chinese came in. We told you, reported a few weeks ago, and all kind of Russian troops coming in there. You remember when we talked about the Russians, and they also had the small helicopter then they had hind helicopters that landed on, the, you know, or hovered over the school ground in the schools up there. And how they buzzed over a Walmart parking lot. Remember all the stories. Remember also the Muscatatuck and Camp Atterbury in Indiana. How they had the drill, and the drill was that Cincinnati was to blow. And we said, and we may have stopped. We may have stopped what was going to ha happen at the Blind Pig. Remember the marathon that was to be run after the Boston Marathon in Cincinnati in conjunction the same weekend down in Louisville with the uh, uh, Kentucky Derby. Yeah, well, anyway, I got a lot of friends, people I know from the old days down in there. You know, faster horses, and younger women, older whiskey, more money guys down there in the Louisville and, and Jeffersonville, Indiana. You know, the Nalbany Mafia boys, Nalbany where they call it down there. Play golf on that old covered bridge out there. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of drone activity taking place there. Now, let me tell you about something else that's got everybody, not a Twitter, but scared out of their poop in their pants. Because I'll tell you what, I've been telling you again and again and again about how there's TR-3Bs, TR-4s up, and they're up over the United States and that they are doing nest searches or nuclear emergency search team kind of work. They're up there with sensors in the spacecraft because they can, they can go across the United States in a few minutes. And they have sensors if they sit above the United States with these sensors that are much more sophisticated, much more accurate, much more powerful sensing technologies than even the highest level the regular military has the Ultra Black, the Space Command military has these technologies that are able to look for nuclear devices, nuclear material, etc. Did you notice today that there was depleted uranium? Depleted uranium in the first story in a 55-gallon drum at the Opelika, Florida airport. That's the executive airport where you don't have all that much security. It's one of the old dope airports in Florida, one of the old dope smuggling airports. And that this thing is initially a depleted uranium, 55-gallon drum that unsealed the depleted uranium. And they had to evacuate portion of the airport and all of that. 
and then later stories say, oh, this is depleted uranium aircraft parts. Bravo, Sierra. They ain't no aircraft parts made out of depleted uranium. This I submit to you, and this is a speculation, but a pretty learned one, I think, is that that material had been flown in in that executive airport where there's not a lot of security, not a lot of stuff doing. That's where they fly in and out dope flights all the time or used to, and CIA flights, all kind of intelligence work going out of Opelika. It's where Barry Seal, I believe, was arrested years ago by the uh, Miami-Dade DA, when at the same time he was working for the CIA to run drugs into Arkansas when Clinton was president. <laughs> and they were taking all the money from the Red Chinese. Remember that? More to come in a second. Anyway, I got a lot to talk about, but here's the deal. Here is why they're up continuously. And that they're basically the only thing holding back or anything is sitting there as the TR3Bs and I submit the mighty men and women of valor that Steve Quayle have known for a long time. I've known about them for quite some time. And I submit they're up there protecting the United States because all of the other normal protection is gone. If you got a JL2 sub right off the coast of California again, you know, it's lucky they didn't launch a missile. They could have launched a missile, done an EMP over the United States. They could have launched two just to be on the safe side. Maybe launched a MIRV technology with their ballistic missile and hit a bunch of places. But they could have done an EMP and then attacked Japan, moved on Japan at the same time, and if the U.S.'s head cut off, decapitated in a strike with an EMP and all kind of problem, then we would not be able to respond quite as well to a, an event in Japan to help the Japanese. So with that respect, they could have been going for it, and it certainly was a drill that the Chinese were doing, just like the Russians have been doing drills, just like the Russians doing snap drills with all of their Urals ballistic missiles. And mobile missiles, because they got ballistic on mobile trailers. And meanwhile, the Joker Tut would like to decommission every kind of nuclear weapon we have. Now, is that because, is that because that when somebody was 16 years old, allegedly, allegedly, and they lived in Indonesia, and their name was Sotero, that allegedly they were recruited by the KGB? Because their mama, who was CIA or DIA or EIEIO, was also a double, perhaps. And that grandpa, who was OSS, may have been a double. Grandma may have been a double. And did they recruit? Then the son, the adopted son of a man named Sotero, who is a Muslim in Indonesia. And then when a certain person got elected to president to be the Joker Tut, We've told you time and time again that allegedly there were parties in Moscow and St. Petersburg, and they danced it all up with all the wild girls and all the fancy stuff and drank their vodka, cheering on. And then you have certain people supposedly, allegedly, like the, uh, uh, you know, king of Saudi Arabia puts $1 billion allegedly in a bank account in maybe the Caymans, maybe somewhere down in the Caribbean, I don't know. Maybe the maybe one of the uh, Channel Islands. Who knows? But that was done at the same time. Is it because there is already a deal that we submit to Joker Tut cut with Putin and Medvedev? Remember when they had the eye of the Satan's eye, the eye of Lucifer, in the gold sunburst behind his head, sitting there in St. Petersburg in the big. Uh, the big uh, palace of the czar, Illuminati world order, you know, Joker Tut, same thing. The Pharaoh of Egypt, huh? Well, anyway, is that why the back door, the front door, the side doors are all open? Is that why the Coast Guard can't really do a proper patrol? Except to rescue? Is that why the you know, the P-3 Orions are not up like they used to be, and they're, some of them are being mothballed. Is that why 
some of our stealth aircraft have been mothballed, or did we give them to the Red Chinese? The technology was given to the Red Chinese, and now they've got stealth aircraft. They have also have a stealth drone that looks a lot like our so-called stealth drone, the X-47. All that's given because of cash, and then going back to this, Americans moved out to Chinese, moved in to FEMA camp refugees' homes. SteveQuail.com, Dreams and Vision. Click on Dreams and Vision at the lower right-hand side. And basically he says, he saw Homeland Security authorities and staff in this dream, sheriff in front of a beautiful home in the suburbs, and he'd also seen it was the family of five loading up their suitcases into a Homeland Security white van, which is preparing to set them off to a FEMA work camp. And then dropping down, he said their two sons were going to college, had to quit, etc. Sounds like America, doesn't it? And then they do have the right to send you to uh, NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act. The executive branch, at their discretion, can send you for an indefinite period of time to a concentration camp. All right? And then here's the deal. As they were getting in and loading up and being loaded in the van as they're leaving, they saw a Chinese family arriving at the home they had just vacated, and the father inserted a key into the lock and opened the door as they proceeded to move in. My friend explained that why this in reality is now taking place. Former President George Bush had made a trade agreement with China and other third world countries. The United States would no longer compete in the manufacturing sector, so the American people lost their jobs or were unable to pay for their mortgages. Let's talk about Detroit. In 1950, there were 296,000 manufacturing jobs in Detroit. Just manufacturing jobs. Each one of those would have created another four to five additional jobs that would have been supported by each of those first-class manufacturing jobs. Can you imagine that was when Detroit had the highest standard of living in the United States, which would have been the highest standard of living per capita in the entire world, 1950-1960 in that era. And then you see... Now, you know how many manufacturing jobs there are in Detroit now, or last year? 296,000 manufacturing jobs, 1950. You know how many last year, or this year? 27,000. Only 27,000 manufacturing jobs. Do you see the writing on the wall? And you see how the Red Chinese have been given all of the manufacturing? And that was done when Poppy Bush... Poppy Bush, who is also, if you know Poppy Bush's predilections or his uh, perversions, allegedly, it's pretty perverse and sickening to see me see him in a picture with the little boy with the shaved head on his, you know, on his lap. And I'm sure that it was a money raising affair and all that for the Secret Service agent. But, you know, if people knew the predilections, you know, uh, the most dangerous game in quotes and how people were used to be hunted, you know, in southern Missouri and certain uh, places, CIA like uh, little uh, alcoves or ranches in the Ozarks and things like that. The most dangerous game is, is man, is humans, you see, and how, you know, anyway, and then you go into the whole Franklin cover-up case out of Nebraska, and those who know about all of that would understand exactly what I'm saying, a boy's town kind of a deal, if you know what I mean. So anyway, he was bastard to China, and then Nixon went and all of that, and they decided to deindustrialize the United States, and a Harvard guy named Daniel Bell wrote the Post-Industrial Society a whole uh, dissertation or a whole book. Daniel Bell, I believe he was Harvard or Yale. I'd like Harvard. The Post-Industrial Society. Well, you see, we have technologies. We have free energy technologies that you could be set one thing in, in every city or put a small teeny one in a house. And there's several ways of doing it. There's free energy completely where you can run a whole city out of a suitcase style thing. But instead, we've got to go through all of this thing and go to war and go to blood sacrifice to bring Lucifer on this planet and to try to make him, you know, a counterfeit of the Lord Jesus. And that is not going to happen. 
but he thinks it's going to, and he's still going to try, and all his minions are trying. Well, to that wit again, the Pakistanis, and this is information that you're not going to find readily, but believe me, this is, this you can take to the bank in a sense. In other words, it's true. Don't take it to the bank. The Pakistanis now are able to manufacture a nuclear device the size of a tennis ball. Tennis ball. We're not worried about suitcase nukes. And then all those shills talking about, well, those have never been maintained. Oh, yeah, they were maintained. They had to be pulled up. They were maintained by stay behind GRU and KGB that are already in the country. And now we've got the Russian Spetsnaz in the country blowing stuff up and setting fires. And they're being paid by Homeland Security and the Pentagon. Ask your Congress people why we got Russian troops inside the United States under Homeland Security auspices when we're getting ready to go to war with them in Syria and Iran. Don't go into their Luciferian night without a fight. You stand for the Lord Jesus. You stand for the Bill of Rights. And the mighty men and women of battle, I know you're the only ones protecting us because there's probably a lot of these tennis balls going around. And the old mighty men and women of valor, thank you so much. Those of you who stick with the Lord Jesus, I appreciate you. And to the old Fandango Rangers, wherever you may be, I know you're ready. Miggy LaPua, you're stone cold cool, baby. Talk to you all later. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you.